Okay, so we're going to start with talking with the, our, about our meninges. Meninges are just protective layers around the brain and spinal cord. So this first picture here, the one thing I want to point out is, let me get my pen here. Okay, so on this side of the brain, I'm tracing in blue right here. This side of the brain you'll see has no protective covering over it. <clears throat> we have taken off the protective covering. But on this side of the brain, I'll just write a two on it. This side of the brain, you can see a white film over the outside of the brain. That white film is a meninges called the dura mater. The dura mater is the tougher um, protective layer of the brain and it's towards the very outside um, of the brain. So it's, this is the outer protective layer of the brain. Okay, let me erase this and we'll go to our next picture. On our next picture here, we are going to see, this is a sheet brain here. And again, you can see on the left side of this brain, you can see that white dura mater covering. And on the, sorry, that was on the left side of the brain, you see the dura mater covering. And on the right side of the brain, you can see that we have removed that dura mater from the brain. The dura mater is going to surround the brain and protect the brain. There are actually three different protective layerings, and that's what we're going to look at here. So in this picture, let me get my pen back. This will be picture one right here. This will be picture two, and then this one will be picture three. Okay. So what you'll see is in picture one, you'll see that you have the dura mater. Again, that's the outside protective meninges. Then underneath it, you will see you have a space that's called your subdural space. And um, sub means under. So this is the space under the dura mater. So your subdural space is underneath that dura mater. And you can see this in picture two. And then you have the arachnoid mater, that's your middle layer, and it looks like a spider web. Um, so spider, the term for spider is arachnoid. So this is your arachnoid mater. This is the middle meninge layer around the brain. Um, within the folds of that arachnoid mater, you will see you have subarachnoid space. So sub means under, so subarachnoid space is a space under the arachnoid mater. Then um, sitting inferior to that, you have the pia mater. The pia mater is the actual layer that comes in contact with the brain. It's the softer, um, smoother layer. So mater means mother, okay? So if you'll think about a protective mother puts her arms around her chicks or her babies, to protect them from the outside world. So these mater layers are like the protective mother putting her arms around um, the very delicate brain. Dura means tough. So the dura mater is the very tough outer layer, the tough mother, okay? Then you have your arachnoid mater. This means like a spider web mother. So she um, has a very webbed look to her. Then the inner layer called the pia mater, pia means soft, so the pia mater is the soft mother of the three layers. And you're very soft when you're a mother and you're hugging your little babies, you're very soft to the inside of your family, but you're tough to the outside world, okay? So the dura mater, again, the tough mother is on the outside. The pia mater, the soft mother, is on the inside. So make sure you can identify uh, the three maters, dura mater, arachnoid mater, and pia mater from picture two, as well as the subdural space and the subarachnoid space. Okay, and picture two, let me just clarify this. Picture two comes from this area down here from picture one that I'm tracing. You'll see this red box here. So this red box is just taken and blown up in picture two, okay? So you're looking 
right where the cranium or the uh, cranial bones intersect that brain right there. Okay, now let's go to picture three here. So I'm going to push our picture up a little bit so you can see all of it. Oh, I didn't want to go that far. Okay, so what you can see here is in picture three, what happens is that dura mater will fold in around that brain and it will cause three dura folds. So again, these are just folds where the dura mater folds in around the brain. You have the top dura fold called your phallic cerebra. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is going to go into the, um, or divide the two cerebral hemispheres. So your falc cerebra is gonna divide those two cerebral hemispheres. Okay, then you have the tentorium cerebelli. The tentorium cerebelli is gonna divide the cerebellum from the cerebrum. Then you have your bottom one. Your bottom dura fold is called your phallic cerebelli. This is gonna divide the two cerebellum hemispheres from each other. Make sure you can identify each of these three dura folds from a picture similar to this. Okay, again, the top one divides the two cerebral um, hemispheres. That's your falc cerebra. Your middle one divides your cerebrum from your cerebellum. This is called your tentorium cerebelli. And your bottom dura fold is called your falc cerebelli. This is gonna divide the two uh, cerebellum hemispheres. Okay, so now let me go and erase all of our little marks here. Okay, and we will go down to our next picture. <clears throat> okay, so here, what we're looking at is we're looking at these meninges again. So this picture one, this one is picture two. So in this, you'll see that we're taking this square that I'm outlining in red here from picture one. And we're taking that square portion right there where your meninges are, and we're gonna blow it up and we're gonna look at it here in picture two. So in picture two, I'm gonna enlarge this, sorry, enlarge this just a little bit so we can see this picture a little bit better. Okay, so in picture two here, you are going to, I'm gonna put it in, um, we'll do it in green. Okay, so right here, this is this where I'm tracing in green. This is gonna be your dura mater. In blue here, <clears throat> where I'm drawing a circle, this is gonna be your uh, subdural space. Then in, um, and this is your bottom layer of your dura mater. So you have a top layer and a bottom layer of your dura mater. And in this dura mater, you see this extension here. This extension that I'm tracing in green right here, that extension, <coughs> excuse me, is called, um, let me, hang on one sec, let me get rid of some of these drawings so you can see it a little bit better. It is kind of congested. Okay, so you can see those villi are those extensions going out into the dura mater. So that little extension area there, that is a villi. Okay, and that villi is gonna allow that subarachnoid space to be extended into that dura mater. And in that subarachnoid space, which pooches out to form that villi, that's gonna allow that cerebral spinal fluid to flow out um, through that dura mater.
So those villi, those extensions there, are called your arachnoid villi. So again, I'm gonna trace it in green. So this whole extension right here that I'm circling in green would be an arachnoid villi. Make sure you can label that as well. Make sure you can label the uh, duramater. You can label the subdural space. You can label the arachnoid mater and the pia mater, as well as the subarachnoid space from this picture here. Okay. Now let's go down to our next picture. Okay, I'm gonna decrease the size here so we can see the whole thing. So now let's talk about the ventricles of the brain. So the ventricles are the spaces within the brain that can house your cerebral spinal fluid. So if we were to pour hot liquid um, plastic into the brain and we let that plastic, that liquid plastic cool, it would form this ventricle here that looks kind of like a ram, uh, ram's head. So that's what they did is they poured a liquid plastic into a brain model and they came up with this shape of the ventricles. Okay, I am going to grab my pen here. You need to know the names of these ventricles. So I'm gonna put, oh, that doesn't show up. Hang on just a minute, let me grab a different color. Okay, so I'm gonna put a one on both of the lateral ventricles. So you have a ventricle that goes off into the right hemisphere of the brain and one that goes off to the left hemisphere of the brain. So each of these that go off to the sides are called your lateral ventricles. They're on either side, okay? And where those two ventricles come together, they form this little V shape right here that you're seeing me trace in red. That area is called your interventricular foramen. So this interventricular means between the ventricles. And this is where the cerebral spinal fluid will empty from each of those lateral ventricles down into the third ventricle. Now this area that I'm circling now, this is your third ventricle because you have one, two lateral ventricles. So those are your first and second ventricles. We don't call them first and second, but they would be your first and second ventricles. So this one circled in red here would be your third ventricle. Then from the third ventricle, you have this tube area right here. That tube is called your cerebral aqueduct. And it's going to then lead to this swollen area down here that I'm now circling, which will be your fourth ventricle. Okay, so let's go back up. Your cerebral spinal fluid is gonna empty into the first and second ventricles, which we call your lateral ventricles. Then the cerebral spinal fluid will empty down into the interventricular foramen. From there, it will go into the third ventricle. From the third ventricle, the cerebral spinal fluid will go down the cerebral aqueduct. It will pull in the fourth ventricle. Then it will go into the central canal of the spinal cord. Make sure you can label these structures on a practical. Again, the lateral ventricles, third ventricle, fourth ventricle, your interventricular foramen, and your cerebral aqueduct. Okay. And that is all. See you next time.